On Wednesday, Lizzie sprung an April fool on me, suddenly breaking the news that one of our male cats had given birth to kittens. For a few panicky seconds, I believed her. All sorts of images went through my mind. One April fool doing the rounds was that the Dalai Lama was going to lead a new world government to deal with the global crisis. But for some reason, I think I was more able to believe in the miracle of our cat, Herbie. I've always loved April Fool season, and I guess it was inevitable this time that I couldn't spot any in the newspapers at all. I wondered if this was because of the coronavirus, that playing tricks on one another maybe just doesn't seem right in the circumstances, or that there were no pages available for any subject not connected with COVID-19. But writers and mystics for centuries have explored the spirituality that can be found in our experiences of surprise. Matthew Fox, the theologian, in his The Soul Unearthed, writes, We are graced every day the sun comes up, and every day a tiger smiles at you, and every day a whale winks at us. We are graced constantly by nature. Grace is nature. And if we would get that right, we would be green again, because there is plenty of grace to go round. Don't let them fool you. It's our problem that we are not receptive to all the grace we are swimming in, day in and day out. Fox goes on to say, Kabir, the wonderful Eastern mystic, says, I laugh at the fish in the water who tells me he is thirsty. That's us, folks. We are the fish in the water. We think we are thirsty for grace. Wake up, Kabir says. You've been sleeping for hundreds and millions of years. One feeling I have had over the last few weeks is this sense of grace. All this dazzling spring weather we've had, I've had more time to be grateful and to be alive. It does feel like an awakening. Nature seems to be singing louder and is reclaiming the skies and landscape. Wild mountain goats have been spotted in the streets of Landudno, nibbling people's gardens. Spring is one of nature's most beautiful surprises. The warmth of the sun returning after the darkness and coldness of winter. And of course, Easter contains the biggest surprise of all, the resurrection, new life emerging from the heart of death. To me, the idea of God is possibly the capacity we all have to be open to finding surprises in ordering, ordinariness and seeing the ordinary in the extraordinary. In many ways, this pandemic has been a harsh and painful surprise for humanity, perhaps a wake up call to bring us back to our senses and live with nature in greater harmony and more respect and it's all been a massive shock to our unsustainable, carbon-heavy lifestyle. Many of us are shocked and anxious about the sheer scale of the suffering and trauma from this virus across the world. Some of us may have been carrying the stress in our bones, but also I've been overwhelmed by the good surprises that are emerging. Nations are having to share expertise and resources, the world seems smaller. We are behaving a little more like a global village than before. In the UK, it feels like it's taken a pandemic to encourage us to reach out to neighbour and strangers alike, with 400,000 volunteers signing up to help the NHS in a week, and over 1,500 people in Bridport alone offering their time and commitment to support those in need. As we face this unfolding crisis, one of the many ironies seems to be that more citizens across the world are finding their voices and wanting to contribute in order to make a difference. Take the phenomenon of singing, as well as being advised to sing happy birthday twice as we wash our hands thoroughly, singing appears to be unifying the world citizens everywhere. It is amazing the way the human voice intuitively seeks out other human voices, even when instructed to self-isolate. 
Many of us have witnessed Italians spontaneously breaking out in song from their balconies across the country. And it's not just because they are a nation of opera singers. Italians have been spreading the slogan of reassurance, Andra tutto bene, everything will be all right. Millions of Italian children have been stuck at home and have left hand-drawn notes in their neighbourhoods with the statement, don't give up and hang on in there. And in the UK, we have the sofa singers. James Sills leads an online choir for all ages for up to hunt for up to 500 people at any one time. Recently, they spent 45 minutes belting out Ben E. King's Stand By Me and Just The Way You Are by Bruno Mars. I know there are countless other online choirs that people are joining in with. This, for me, calls to mind a wonderful poem by the First World War poet Siegfried Sassoon. He wrote this after the armistice when soldiers on both sides of no man's land were finally allowed to put down their guns, and one natural response was for them to sing. The first verse of his poem, Everyone Sung. Everyone suddenly burst out singing, and I was filled with such delight as prisoned birds must find in freedom, winging wildly across the white orchards and dark fields, on and on and out of sight. I'd like to finish with a short prayer. Let us come together in stillness and in oneness. Let us be united in our voices. Let us sing out our determination to emerge stronger and wiser. May this global crisis galvanise world citizens to solve challenges together, to work as an international family and for us to take greater responsibility for the well-being and safety of all communities living under all kinds of threats, the oppression of war, famine and climate change and other human-made suffering. Can we learn from the huge challenges of this pandemic to let go of the behaviours that diminish us and be awake to the elements of life that really matter? Kindness to our neighbour, gentleness to ourselves, working in harmony with nature and being open to the great and good surprises at the heart of this extraordinary life. Amen. And goodbye.